Hey Bayek, it's me Ian. and in today's video I'm continuing my look at classic albums from my CD collection. Um, some of you may not think they're as classic as others. I think this one would definitely come in that classic um, category. So this is Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel from... 1970. Now, previously, the album before was Bookends, uh, 1968. And this is the final studio album. There is the following year, um, the Simon and Garfunkel Greatest Hits released as well, which was a massive seller. But this is the final studio album. Now, um, this was recorded between... November 1968 to November 1969. So there, it's a year um, getting this together. And it was released on January the 26th, 1970. The label is Columbia. Um, studios used were uh, Columbia Studio B and E, New York City. Um, CBS Columbia Square Los Angeles and Columbia Studio A Nashville and this album was produced by Simon and, Garf uh, and Garfunkel as well as their producer who's always guides them in their work Roy Halley um, he also produced Paul Simon's solo career, most of his albums, but he had done things like Dave Clark Five, The Yardbirds, Barbara Streisand, The Birds, um, Blood, Sweat and Tears, Rufus, uh, Mark Harmon Band. These were a quality producer that stuck with them and, of course, his relationship with Paul Simon continued. Um, I think it's fair to say that this album, um, being the last album, is seen as the pinnacle of their career. A career which, well, as Simon Garfunkel um, really hit the big time um, with The Sound of Silence, um, which was uh, the sort of, it wasn't quite the debut album, but it was the debut on Columbia because they had um, Wednesday Morning, 3am was their first album and then it was sort of re-released and then we got The Sound of Silence as a second uh, studio album. Um, that was January 1966. Um, and um, we also got then um, Parsley, Sage, Rosemary and Time. Um, and we got the Graduate soundtrack. They contributed a lot to the Graduate because uh, particularly the most memorable song, of course, is Mrs. Robinson, which appears on Bookends, the album um, before this, from 1968. I think in ma and many people believe, I think, and I, th I think so as well, that Bookends is a brilliant album and it's perhaps the crowning glory, though this is seen... Um, no, the critics were quite mixed on this album. Anyway, I'm going on and on, aren't I, about these sort of stuff. Um, let's look at the lineup on this. We've got Paul Simon doing lead vocals, acoustic guitar, and percussion. We've got Art Garfunkel doing lead vocals and percussion. Uh, we've got Los Incas. Um, doing the Peruvian instruments, which is featured in, as you'll see when, and when I go through the tracks, a big influence on this particular track. Um, then we've got Joe Osborne playing bass guitar. 
We've got Larry uh, Kineshatel playing piano. We've got Fred Carter Jr. on guitar. Uh, we've got Pete Drake um, doing the um, pedal steel uh, guitar. Um, Al Blaine doing drums. And um, we've got Simon Askell and Ernie Freeman arranging and doing the strings, which is an important part of that. And then we've got John Freddis, Randy Brecker, Lou Soloff, and um, Alan Rubin, who do the brass, because we get the brass in there as well. Um, so that's the personnel involved in this. Um, now we'll go through the tracks. Um, it starts off with Bridge Over Troubled Water. It is perhaps one of the most crowning moments of this album, really. And this song, I think, is one of those songs that will always be around, always remembered. It's a wonderful song. Um, it's just the lyrics are brilliant. The, the, the way it builds up this song. And it's, I think it's probably one of the most covered songs going i may be wrong there but it, a lot of people cover this song because it's it's got it's i think it's one of those songs that reaches out beyond something um the lyrics and just the atmosphere it 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 really does go out there and i think that's why it's always so popular it's kind of spiritual as well, in a way. I think that's a, a way to describe it. It's got a spirituality about it as a track that crosses over into the mainstream uh, and it's beautifully done. Um, what else can I say? Now, the second track is El Condo Pasa, if I could. Um, and the English lyrics are by Paul Simon. Um, this is the Peruvian influence that we talked about um, with Los Incas. It, again, this is such a wonderful track. The music is beautiful, outstanding. Um, the sounds they're getting on this album are a real major part of it. Um, then we've got Cecilia, which is a, such a happy, joyous um, song written by uh, Paul Simon. It, it's really there. And the, apparently the percussion, they get all sorts with the percussion on this. It's there. Absolutely wonderful. What an outstanding track, Cecilia. Is. See, we've already had outstanding tracks. Then we've got Keep the Customer Satisfied, which is another upbeat track. And then we have a change in tone in many ways with... Uh, so long, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, who um, is an um, famous uh, American architect. Um, this track is, is beautiful, absolutely wonderful. Um, then we've got The Boxer. <laughs> Again, it's a classic track. The Boxer is one of Simon Garfunkel's tracks that people know so well. It's... It's great. What can you say about the boxer? It's it's just a popular track song. It, brilliant. Uh, then we've got Baby Driver. <laughs> Baby Driver again. The style. It's oh wow. This is really going there. And then um, the only living boy in New York that builds up, doesn't it? Just epic. It's like an epic track with Paul Simon just. Oh, wow, the genius of this. He wrote this when he was on his own. Um, I think when um, Art Garfunkel was uh, busy filming and um, he, this song came out and it's absolutely wonderful. It's, it's, he just felt alone in New York and it, it just comes out in this wonderful way. Uh, and then there's another which is um, called... Why don't you write me? Which again, it almost has a bit of humour there, and it's 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 wonderful the way he's put that together. 
wow, what can I say? And then um, we have got, well, I suppose you could say it was like the final track, but um, there is uh, another bit to this. We get Bye Bye Love, which is, well, it was an Everly Brothers song. Um, so it was it was recorded live, but this was written by um, uh, Felice Bryant and Bordeaux Bryant, and um, I don't know who they are, but there we are. Uh, they they wrote their song, but it was uh, Everly Brothers, but they wanted this and they put this at the end of their shows, and it's, it fits again. It fits so well in this album, uh, and then we have got. Um, song for asking which sort of is the end of the album and wow beautiful again that has like sort of a live they bring the live into the song and then the song just it just ends the, the album in in such a wonderful way of course if you're um uh interested as you might be um uh, you always get bonus tracks on these albums and uh, I'll, I'll show you what the bonus tracks are uh, when I come to show you the uh, thing. So what is my overall impression of this album? I think it's a fantastic album. Absolutely love it. But as I say, I think Bookends is a better album. It's a concept album, Bookends. Um, and it, it works so well. Uh, and it's got America on it and... Um, Wow, I love America. It's one of our greatest songs. Um, but this album, some people will say this is the greater album with the variety of music. And I have to agree in that. Um, this was a massive uh, seller. Um, present um, over 25 million copies um, were sold of this worldwide and it's probably still selling in some places though nowadays i don't know where with the way the market is but it's one of those timeless uh records if you look back in history it's just a fantastic album um again it's one of those that did have mixed reviews i don't know why this happens and the because i think the public just loved simon and garfunkel the songs and this album, as I say, did sold so well. So the opinions of the critics didn't really matter too much at all, as they shouldn't. <laughs> they shouldn't. Uh, but then critics catch up often with the public. And I think obviously now on assessment, we see this album in a different light. And it is um, it is the Farewell Studio album. There has been some live albums when they got together for live performances. And I think they have done the odd track here and there. But really, this is the final studio album um, with them. And I think it's a good fitting end to their career. Um, it, it, it typifies musically all the different sounds that they, you, well, particularly Paul Simon was interested in. And as we see, as he went on in his solo career, he was in, he got into world music, you know. He was into so many different sounds and things, and he's writing. Um, I like earlier, I must admit, personally, earlier Paul Simon solo stuff, I think I prefer, but a great writer, and he open to all these influences, fantastic. And Art Garfunkel is such a beautiful voice. It really is um, a beautiful voice. Um, it's just outstanding. So it's just the way he does it. And it is nice when they they did come back together at various points again and did these songs and the crowd, you know, the, the audience was massive, as you can imagine on these reunion tours. Um, but this album, it, it's one of those albums that you see and you know straight away, oh, yeah, Simon Garfunkel. Because the, I remember The Greatest Hits came out the following year. These were massive outselling albums. They were there everywhere. They were in the chart, album charts for ages, you know, probably until Pink Floyd um, with Dark Side of the Moon did, did, <laughs> oh, did them over. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> that was a massive seller. But it's another story. 
Um, this album is is a great ending to their career. I really do enjoy listening to it. It still gives me a lot of pleasure all these years later. I did have it on record, of course, and yeah. but now I've got it back in my CD collection. And here it is, my CD collection. And, I, and just before I go, I would just say that the true uh, tracks are uh, Phil 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 O, which is only one forty two, and then there's another version of Bridge Over Troubled Water, uh, which is not quite as long as the um, one on the uh, original um, song of the first track, but they these are it says previously unreleased. These are bonus tracks on here, and here is the the album. And look, you remember that? Nice price. Look at that. It's the classic sleeve. And you could always remember the greatest hits at the side of it as well. There's the back. All the track listings you can see well. And the bonus tracks. And look at that. I like this as well. Look at this. Look at that colour. Lovely. Lovely colour. Um, and if I just take that out, look. There they are together right absolutely wonderful and then look at this you've got um all the lyrics the lyrics to the songs on here and there's this little booklet let me, let me show you the little booklet wonderful cds aren't they absolutely wonderful look the booklet you look there I mean, this is fantastic. And then there's, there's all about Simon Garfunkel here. Yeah. Oh, the career. Um, wow. It's just amazing. Just loads of it. Loads and loads. There they are. Oh, fantastic. Isn't this wonderful? Yeah, I, this is, I say, this is why I love CDs. Everything about them. Just absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And um, getting this is just, it's its icing on the cake, isn't it, really? Um, you know, you get all this. Beautiful. And there it is. And actually, this is another one I picked up from Music Magpie as well. <laughs> it's so really cheap, yeah. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, that's it. So if you're new to the channel... Um, please subscribe and we'll let you know when I put out these videos. Um, if you want to see all the music things that I've reviewed, look in the um, playlist and you'll see all the albums that I've reviewed. I'm building up hopefully a few albums now that you can see. Um, but also I review a lot of movies and TV shows and um, yeah, all with a nostalgia feel. Um, and um, if you like this particular video, please give the video a like. If you like this video, it gets it out onto YouTube and um, all algorithms and all that stuff. Hopefully other people might enjoy it. And also, if you've got any comments as well, please put your comments down. I love to read your comments. I always answer them. And that's it. So all I've got to say is I'll see thee. I'll see thee again.